Hi there, it's Julie joining you today. I thought I'd share this plaque project with you and so you can have a go at making one yourself using the gorgeous scenescape papers on the wooden plaque. These papers are so gorgeous, they're double sided and very usable. You don't want to waste any of these, they're so gorgeous. Anyway, I've used lots of them already but I thought that this one would be perfect for this project. Just working out how to place your heart on the paper. So I thought I'd share this handy tip, what I like to do. You have one of those cellophane bags that you put your cards in. If you just draw around the plaque using a Sharpie marker. This isn't necessary, but it does make it easier if you've got a nice piece of paper and you want to get perfect positioning. I don't know why I did this bit. The holes are too small to get my pen through, but I thought I'd give it a go. There's always a chance, I suppose, but I failed. Just grab a couple of paper clips and you can attach it to the edge of the paper. Just hold it in place. Generally, I wouldn't. I'd just have a go at cutting it directly but I thought I'd show you how you can do it this way. You want to cut the paper not on the line, give yourself a nice border around the edge and then I'll share how you can make it the right size once you put it onto the pack. I've got plenty of paper left over for other projects so a little bit of paper, but you don't want to waste this, it's so gorgeous. Remove the paper clips. Now you want to put glue all over the plaque. I'm always amazed when Amanda does a, her um, demos on the telly that her glue never blocks up, but mine does, it's always a bit too thick. Anyway, I cover my plaque. Add a little bit of water to my fingers and then rub it over. I probably added a little bit too much water there. But if you rub it over, it just makes the glue move better on the plaque, on the wood. And it smooth it round so you're not going to end up with any lumps and bumps once you put your paper on. I do like getting my fingers messy. <laughs> do you ever got a paper towel by the side? But never mind. Place your card on paper on top. Got a little bit of wiggle room. And you've got a few seconds to move the paper around. I then just use a clean brayer. Give it a firm rub onto the plaque. This just irons out any lumps and bumps that have been left if you've not managed to smooth the glue out with your fingers. Right. And just rub around the edge then you can see exactly where the that finishes makes it easier for the next step. And there you go. Almost done. Right now, I take the nail file. Just one of the little cheap nail files and go around the edges. I'm going to fast forward this because. You don't want to watch it all, you'll just get an idea. Just rub it away from you so that the paper doesn't flick up and come unstuck. And smooth off the edges. Eventually, the edge of the paper will come away. You've got a nice clean line all the way around the plaque. There you go. It takes a few, a few minutes, but it's worth doing much cleaner than doing it with scissors and you just poke through some holes. I've got one of those little pokey tools that's got the rubber end so I just sort of smooth it into where the hole is. You can do this with the end of a pen really but if you've got a pokey tool it's useful. There you go. Now for the hard part, deciding what stamps to use. 
I thought I'd use Josie here. It comes with a little seed head and believe. Just work out if they fit on the heart. Just gonna move them around a little bit. We're going to move it so that the wing just fits off the edge of the heart. I quite often do that when I make a card as well. Quite like the look actually. Yep, I've got all the stamp on there so you can see the full word. And cut my stamp using Versafine Nocturne. It's a good ink for this sort of thing. It works well with the Lavinia stamps. Gives a nice clean image. Just make sure your ink pad's nice and juicy. And tap it firmly over the stamp. Make sure you don't miss any. Oops, I've got a little bit too much ink over the edge there. Just give it a little rub off with a finger. I hope I don't get that inky th inky thumb on my image later. Just hover it over the top, remove the word stamp and press it down. You're going to need to press really firmly. Don't be in any hurry to lift it off. Just apply a nice even pressure. Then when you remove it, and do the same with your word stamp. I like this word stamp, it's um, got an almost distressed look to it. Maybe that will disguise it if I put a thumbprint on the heart later. Hopefully I won't do that, but it has been known. Right, just hover it till you get the right position in. Yep, that's about it. And apply the pressure once again. Give it a firm press and don't be in a hurry to lift it. Done. That's good. Now I just need to add some grounding for her. I'm going to rip off a little bit of the paper to give a nice rough edge. Yep. Not quite the right shape. Let's give it a bit more. A bit more off of it. Yep. Looks about right. I'm gently going to use more of the Versafine Claire. On my smoothie, just take a little bit of the ink off before you go to the paper and just check you got it in position and just gently tap the ink onto the paper. Just do it lightly, you can always go back and add a bit more later. But if you just check the positioning is right, yep, happy with that. Lay it back on and just go a little bit heavier to the edge and add the colour. Now I'm going to add another stamp on there in a minute. On the little wild hairs, I think this one's called Lola. Just check on positioning where I'm going to want her so I can work out the ground. Yep. Gently tap it, adding the ink to your paper. Take a little bit off before going to the paper just so it's not too thick when you first go in. Yep, happy with that. Just get Lola ready. I'm going to use the Nocturne again, put on the block. Give it a good tap. Make sure she's got a good coating. Yep. Bit off the edge. That's it. And then I'm going to sit her on that little mound underneath the word stamp. Firm press. And hold it for a minute or so. And there you go. Lola sat there. Just 
just going to go back in and add a little bit more shading underneath her as if she's cast a shadow. This nocturne's really good, don't be frightened to use it to add colour to your project. find myself doing it all the time. Right now I'm going to go in with the little seed heads. This one's the larger one of the two. This is one of the pound stamps. I'm going to do this with the first stamp in. Sorry, with the first lot of ink and press it on so it looks like it's really in the foreground of the card. Sorry, not card, the plaque. Give it a good push. Just imagine where Josie's blown those seeds to. There you go. I know it didn't come with Josie this one but they work so lovely. I'm going to go back to the second one. This is the one that did come with the original fairy and I, this one I'm going to do second or third generation so these ones go into the distance. Yep. Again, just working out where she would have blown them onto, really. I don't know about you, I used to love doing a, one of the seed clocks, the dandelion clocks when I was little. Now I'm going to come in with one of the fir tree stamps and just Add a little bit of ground in. Lay the mask on a little bit first. So I've not got a full on tree at the bottom of my heart. Using the Versafine Shady Lane this time. I'm going to fast forward in a minute. You don't want to watch how long it took me to decide where to place it. I did several around under the fairy and again under the little hair. Just giving a nice little edge to the ground. Does that make sense? I know what I mean anyway. And then cleaned off the stamp a bit and then went back in with a nocturne just to add a little bit more shadowing. There you go. And fast forward. I don't really tap that fast. I don't want to bore you all. And that's that done. I'm now going to use the mini toadstool. I think this is another of the pound stamps and I'm going to stamp it using the Distress Oxide Frayed Burlap. Just give it a few taps and add it to the foreground. I'm on fast forward again. If only you knew how long it took me to decide on positioning of these few little toadstools. I bet I'm not the only one that takes so long. I'm so indecisive. I'm now going to use Marine Kelp. I know it's meant for under the water but I quite like it for foliage that looks like it's hanging from the tree. It's got a soft a soft edge and I thought I'd stamp it using the distress oxide peeled paint. It works well for the foliage. A few taps have on the stamp. Here I am on fast forward again. First and second generation to add dimension. Yep, not too bad. A few more there. And then I'm going to go back in with First Fine Claire and Shady Lane. This will just bring it more to the foreground. There you go. Done. Now I'm just going to use the lovely elements in the mulberry shade. This is one of Trace's new ink pads. 
they're a dye ink pad and they're so juicy so you only need a little bit on your sponge so dab your smoothie off before going around the edge of the heart I'm gonna have to fast forward this again because it takes me a little while but it's well worth it just to add a little frame around the edge yep and then I'm gonna go back in with once again the nocturne oh no I can't help myself just another smoothie with a little bit of the nocturne just a gentle coating around the edge to frame the image I did some lots of my cards as well as plaques I think that's about right. What do you think? I'm now going to add, I don't know if you ever used this, it's called a Wink of Stella. It's like a nice sparkly glitter, but it's like a pen. You just squeeze the edges and it adds a lovely shimmer. It's completely smooth, so it's just so versatile. But I love it on the wings. Can't pick it up too well on the camera, but believe me, it's got lots of sparkle. Now I'm just going to go in with my white gel pen. And I'll show you how I like to use it. I know it looks like I'm rubbing it off, but I just do it around the edge of the image. And I brush it with the edge of my finger so it adds like a subtle shading. Shading? No, like it's catching the light, that's the word. Not shading. So I draw it on and then just depending on which way I can imagine the light's going to catch it, I draw my finger across the top and soften it. I'm going to have to fast forward again in a minute because once I start I don't know when to stop. There you go, I'm going to go across the tops the letters in a minute but around the front of there on the rabbit soften his ears also it adds a little bit of dimension to his body when you just add a little touch just rubbing the harshness away with the tip of my finger and the tops of the letters just as if the light's catching them and I'm going to go back in in a minute and just touch the bottom edges. There you go. That's that. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of white to the foreground using the gel pen. Just so the light catches the edge of the grasses. Rubbing it off with my finger before I go in with... A bit of glitter. For this I'm going to use my quickie glue pen. It's nice to have a little bit of control rather than using a bottle of glue and it saves adding dimension like it does when you use the pearls. Just touch a few areas. You don't have to be in a hurry, just touch it on before grabbing the glitter. This, I don't think Tracy does this one anymore. To be honest, the squib, although it's nice, it does take a while to get enough out. The new bottles are nice with the flip top. I think she probably does a holographic one in the new ones. But it's lasted me forever, so... It was well worth the price. There you go, just touch the edge of the letters. I know I went around there with the gel pen, but a little bit of glitter's nice as well, isn't it? Can't beat a bit of glitter. Gonna sparkle all the way to Christmas. A little bit down there as well. Scrib the glitter on, as you can see. 
take some doing but we can really see the sparkle at this angle Nearly done Whole craft room's glittery. Goes everywhere. Well, I'm sure, I'm not the only crafter that goes the whole year sparkling. Makeup not needed. And if that's not enough sparkle for you, I thought I'd add just a little bit more using the mica minerals in the gold. Oh, it's so lovely. Just gonna use a spray bottle, put a tiny amount in the top. Don't want to waste any. And then I'm gonna put the lid on, otherwise, I might knock it over. Has been known. Just spray some water in the top. lid on, give it a good shake and then mist it over the project. Not sure if it will pick up on camera but it adds the most gorgeous shimmer and I love it. Now nearly finished, just need to add some string. Just put a little bit of glue on your finger and roll the end of the string makes it easier to thread it through the hole it always splits that makes it tricky but it's nice to share a little tip with a fellow crafter you can always learn something new tighten and not the other side And there you go. And I thought for this one that I would add a little bit of ribbon. Tracy's got this gorgeous organza ribbon and this raspberry works so lovely with the mulberry. Just tighten a bow. I do like a nice bow. In my previous life I was a florist so lots of practice at bows. to work to get it perfect and this organza really holds the shape so it's beautiful just need a nice sharp pair of scissors to cut it at an angle if you do get any little fraying you can always just warm it over a candle and it just seals the edge but I don't need to here because these scissors are so sharp. So sharp, it's like a tongue twister. Done. I'll just attach that to the top of my string and hang it up. There you go, all done. Well, that's a first for me, over and done. Hope you like it. Have a good day and I hope you join the other members of the team to see their demos. Goodbye.